This is Carrie. And I'm Rosalie. And we're here today to talk you through how to do some really fun Halloween crafts. You should have come to the library to pick up your craft kit. If you haven't, we still might have some left. Um, if you want to give the library a call to see if there's any available before you drive over, that'd probably be a good idea. They'd be available in the teen room if there's any left. Our first craft is a spider web. It's a very simple craft, but it's going to look really cool hanging up in your room. So all you need to do this craft is a hoop, a bunch of spider web, a ribbon, and some plastic spiders. To do the craft, you literally can just take your spider web and kind of stretch it out over your hoop. So you're just going to try to get it so that the whole hoop is basically covered in spider webs. If you have a lot of clumps, you kind of want to spread them out. And you might need some tape to attach it, or sometimes you can just sort of stick it around the hoop. This went slightly better the first time I tried it. <laughs> but you can stretch it over. and just make it look like a spider web. This doesn't look as good as I know you could make it, um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna stop there. Um, once you have your spider web looking as good as you'd like it to, and you again can just you know keep stretching, keep moving things around, tie it together, you just take your ribbon, stick it through the top, make a little hole through the spider webs, and tie it up. Then you'll be able to hang your spider web. And then you can just stick some of your little plastic spiders on the spider web. These are cute and little. Some of them are glow in the dark. And there you go. A very basic spider web, a very simple craft, but it looks really cool. And I promise you it looks much better in person than this does right now. Our next craft is a paper pumpkin. So from your craft kits, you're going to need these strips of paper. They're already cut and they have holes punched in them. You're going to need a length of wire, also from your kit. And you're going to need these brads, tacks. We'll have two of those. And you're going to have this pre-cut leaf made out of felt for the top. Okay. So to get started, you're going to take one of your strips of paper and you're going to take your wire and you're going to thread it through one of the holes and you want the pattern part. Everyone has slightly different patterns, but you want the pattern part to be facing up right now and just kind of bend your wire around so that it sort of sticks, kind of sticks to the paper. You want the wire to just kind of be through the hole and hanging through the paper. Next, you're going to take one of your brads and stick it through the hole from the outside. So you want the brad, the head of the brad to be on the pattern part. Next, you're going to take your stack of papers and you're going to thread them through on one side. I've gotten a little discombobulated. Um, thread them through so that they go through both the wire and onto the brad. Oops, it's just falling through. So you just thread the wire through the hole. Make sure that your wire stays hooked on to that first strip of paper. If it didn't, kind of try and tuck it back on so that it stays there. And then you want to put the brad through it, through the hole and spread it out so that it's hooked on. So your paper should look like this. You should have the brad growing through. You should have the wire hooked onto that first piece. And then on the bottom, it should look like this where it's spread out 
and then it also has the wire. Next you're going to take your other hole. You're going to sort of bend it like this so that your pattern's on the outside. You want to stick your brand through from the bottom so that the head is also on that pattern side. And then you're going to put your wire through all the way. If your brad falls off, that's fine. You can fix it in a minute. You want to have it so that the wire is going to stick out a little bit. You don't want it to be totally um, at the edge of there. Um, but you're going to want to wrap your wire around your brad a little bit just to kind of keep it in place. I think I maybe made mine too long. This is going to kind of determine a little bit how tall your pumpkin is. And then once you have your wire wrapped around your brad a little bit so that it stays in place, then you can also hook your brad around. So it should look like this on the underside and like this on the outside. So you have that extra wire piece sticking out, your, the head of your brad is on this side, and then very simply you just spread out your paper. It's easy to do but it takes a little bit of effort to just kind of spread out your paper so that you turn this into a pumpkin. You just want to spread them out, they can overlap a little bit. And you just want to spread everything out so that your pumpkin kind of sits on the table. And it has a different effect depending on how much you have a gap or if you have them really close together. And you can make it a little taller, a little shorter. If you make it shorter, it's going to be fuller because the paper is not going to need to stretch out as much. But they kind of stick together a little bit, so it takes a little bit of time to get them all around all the way. And then eventually it will look something like this. And again, you can kind of take the time to really spread them out and make it look nice. And then the last thing you can do is if you have a pen or you can even use your finger, you can kind of curl this little extra bit of wire so it becomes like a little curly cue. And then you can put your leaf on it. may be easier to put the leaf on before you turn it into a curly cue. And voila! You have your very own paper pumpkin. And last but not least, our final craft are Halloween beaties. All right, so for this, they're gonna be together in a bag. You're going to have your string. You're going to have the beads. So you'll have all the colors and numbers that you need. And you're going to have a little latch and a key ring so you can put your bead on something. You can hang it up, put it on your keys, backpack. Um, and you're also gonna have a map of what to do. So you have the instruction sheet. So the first thing to do when you start out is you're going to take your string. So to make sure that everything stays centered, you fold it right in half. And then you take this, the little short one, and then you thread it on until it's in the middle. And you tie a knot around it. 
So you can do a little three, pull it down. And if it doesn't work the first time, you could just try again. That's why it's good to get started in the beginning like this, because this ensures that you won't have the same problem when you're doing your beads. And everything will just pull nice towards the center. So you have it tied on nice here. You can see your knot and you have string to either side. So the basic way this is going to work is you're going to look at your pattern and it's going to show you the numbers and each of these is a row. So for this beady, we're going to start with one bead on the top. Now in a minute I'm going to go to one that's partially made so I don't have any green beads right now but I'm going to show you the technique with an orange one. So to start you have an orange bead you put it on one side. So you thread it through so it looks like this. Then you go to the other string and you thread it through the bead again. So you have it right in the middle. Right from the other direction the second time. Yeah, so you have it through both strings. Then you hold them together and you pull the bead till it's in the middle. So now that you have this in the middle to anchor you, you don't have to worry about it going way on the end. So then you tighten it from both ends until your bead is on there and you have the two strings again. So for your next row, you check your picture again. On this one, the next row is going to be two beads. So this time you repeat it with two beads. So you take the two at the same time and then you thread them through one side. So then it'll look something like this. Then you take your other string and you thread it through the opposite way. So again, you have it in the middle. And then you repeat the same thing. You pull it all the way down until it's next to your other bead. And you pull from both sides until it's even. So then it'll start to look something like this. So here is an example is a little bit further into the same one and you see how your rows start counting up. So then it'll get a little bit more complicated in that you just have to keep counting. So here you add a row of one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five. If you have different colors, you pick the color in the middle. So double check they have the right numbers because that's what's going to make the shape the, um, correct. So. Basically, you just keep repeating. When you get to the end of your beady, you're going to tie a knot and make sure that you flatten it out. So you guys are going to have two in your kits. Whichever one you feel like starting with. This one is a little bit simpler, the pumpkin, but some of your beads will have some other parts to them. So for this pattern, the skeleton, it starts out a little simpler. It starts out the same way, but it has some other details. So in this one, you can see the pattern. I've already done the first few rows. I already did the head of the skeleton. So right now, it looks like this. When it's done, it's gonna look like this. So you see, not all the rows are all together. You have the arms, then it goes together, and then you have the legs. So, what we're going to illustrate now is how to do the arms. So, we have it all together. We have our two sides. So, basically, the trick here is just interpreting the diagram. So, you can see on the arms, at the end, you have that little hand. So, what you're going to do to start is thread all of the pieces that are going to be on the arm onto the string. When you're doing something like this, arms or legs, you only use one side at a time. So you can kind of lay this other side off to the side. So if we look at the arms here, we have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we started with our three. And now we're going to do four. And then three more. Now in order to make the hand, these last three beads are going to form a loop at the end. That means you keep them over to the side and you thread the next thread through the fourth bead. For this one, you thread it through the next three beads. So you see, when you pull it to a loop, it naturally forms that little hand. So now you have the loop at the end of your bead. Now this one is a little different because it has a little elbow in the arm. So that means for the next bead, you skip it. You only leave that on one side of the string. Now to complete the rest of the arm, you take that end and thread it through the next three until you're back to their rib cage. So when you pull it together, it all comes together, you have an arm like that. Keep following the picture. Once you know what the different rows look like, you just repeat it. It's the same process on the skeleton for the arms and the legs. Thank you so much for joining us for our craft today. Um, we have plenty of more fun events coming up at the library that we hope you'll join us for. If you're looking for more information, you can follow us on Instagram at JPL Teens. You can also sign up for our email newsletter by going to our website, johnsonlib.org. Um, so sign up for the teen newsletter. We have events every week, Tuesdays after school. Um, some of them are online. Occasionally they're in person, though with the weather changing, I think most of them are going to be online for a little bit. But make sure you, that you sign up so you get more information. Some of the events that we have coming up are funny online games. There's a website called Jackbox Games where you might have to draw something silly or make a funny joke. Even if you're not a funny person, even like me, um, you can still participate and have a good time. Um, we're also doing a music trivia, Kahoot. Um, Kahoot's always really fun. Um, and it's just a nice, fun event to do. And there'll be a small prize for the winner. We're also gonna do an online escape room that is Bitmoji classroom themed. So if you're a little tired of the whole Bitmoji classroom phase and you wanna get out of this never ending Zoom, you'll have to join our escape room and see if you can work together to solve all the clues and uh, escape. And last but not least, we're doing a cooking class. Um, right before Thanksgiving, we're gonna learn how to make apple turnovers. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Trust me, I can't really cook. So if I can do it, you can do it too. All right, we'll hope to see you guys again next time. Thanks so much. Bye.